Assalamu alaikum and peace and blessings be upon all of you. I am coming to you guys from Islamic Society of Tampa Bay live this time and we have a great converse story that I want to talk about with Brother Yaqub. Assalamu alaikum brother. Uh, so this is going to be a unique story. Uh, brother Yaqub, his background is uh, Jewish, so his mom and his dad is also, as their background is uh, Jewish. And uh, uh, he converted to Islam, I think about 18 months ago. And I wanted to ask him exactly uh, what inspired him to convert into Islam and what does his parents think about it? Um, in general? Yes, all the way around. <laughs> okay. Why did you convert? Um, so the story, uh, I don't know if you want me to just tell the whole yeah, story. Yeah, tell the story, yes. Okay, sure. Um, so basically I, uh, I, I grew up in a, a very typical um, American household. It, well, you know, the, my parents were Jewish. Um, they, it wasn't like we were a fully practicing household, like most American Jews today. Uh, you'll find the vast majority of, uh, of Jews in America, they vary, but the vast majority of them are, are mostly secular. Yeah. With uh, Judaism uh, maybe standing as a, as a moral compass for some, um, gives them uh, a guide, a path, but not something that they, they truly uh, use. As, uh, worship is not is not the focus of their lives. Yeah. But for some, Talk about it if you can. <laughs> for, some, sorry, for, some, for some Jews, especially the ones who are more orthodox, they, um, they for sure, they, they take this, uh, this worship to the extent that we would imagine. But when I grew up, mostly it was very secular. So I grew up as a normal American with Jewish traditions on the side, and I did go to Hebrew school growing up. I even went to the Hasidim, uh, the Hasidic um, uh, Hebrew school for the first few years, which is the people who are ultra-orthodox. They, um, they, wear, they go out their payas, yeah. that's what they call the, the pearls, they, um, they, they dress up, uh, they wear the tzitzit, the, um, the tzitzit are those, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the coats, the co well, the, 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 yeah, they have little knots at the end, right. and so, you know, they, uh, and they wrap tefillin, they wrap, um, uh, you know, they would, they would pray in a very particular way, so this is the way that the ultra-orthodox um, uh, Jewish community, I, I got to witness this. I got to witness the way that they pray versus the way that the secular Jews in America typically, you know, they, they water everything down to something that is very easy, very basic, very uh, acceptable, yeah. and not confusing. Yeah. And so after I did my Hebrew school there, I, I ended up going to uh, Sunday school, you know, to learn about Judaism and, and that kind of, you know, that, uh, the religious ideals, those, um, uh, how, you know, Understanding the stories and everything that really took took place during my elementary school years and uh, and middle school years, and I even had a, a bar mitzvah, so I I, I lived a very typical um, Jewish life. I, I also went, you know, starting in, in uh, you know uh, when I was in the, uh, going to fifth grade or so, I started going to a summer camp for one month every summer. Uh, that was particularly uh, for Jewish kids, uh, conservative, so like middle level, you know, we, we celebrated the, the Sabbath and everything, but um, kept kosher, two separate kitchens, everything. So uh, prayers every morning. And these prayers I, I, were always in Hebrew. We would never say the prayers, except sometimes we'd say it in English, but most of the time it's, it's, it's in Hebrew. And these prayers, most of the time, we have an idea of what they're about. And we, we, we may remember what the translations are, are, but we never study what the meanings, what the meanings behind the prayers are. We never go into depth. Never. No matter what level it was, we never went into depth about it. Because it's something you're supposed to work your way up towards unless you really want to become a, uh, a rabbi or whatever. You just don't go into it very much, you know? You may try to look at the morals from a very you know, basic perspective. Anyway, I was not very practicing. Going into high school, I became even less practicing. Stopped going to the synagogue much. And by the time I, I was going to college, um, what I did was I, I graduated one year early from high school to take a gap year. Uh, there was a program that I was able to go on um, as a, a, one year in Germany as an exchange student. I did that as a gap year. And uh, I did that because I wanted to experience something new. I wanted to learn something more about this world. And while I was there, I realized maybe college in the US isn't really what I want to do right now. And college in Europe seems kind of appealing. 
So I decided, I looked at the colleges around there, and I, I got accepted into the University of Amsterdam, which is in the Netherlands. Amsterdam is the city that everyone knows for partying or whatever <laughs> it is that it is. Stick in that capital, you know, yeah. that's, that's what it is. So, you know, I, I wanted to go there because I knew that if I wanted to do anything, I would do it there. It, it, it wouldn't be difficult for me. Yeah. It wouldn't be something, this is the, the mind of a, a, you know, uh, a disbeliever, the mind yeah. of somebody who, the thing is, is that it, what people will tell you is college are the best, the best years of your life, you can do whatever you want, yeah. right? this, this, that, you can try all these different things. It's about trying things and figuring out yourself, you know, in the, in the mind of a disbeliever. Yeah. All of them, they all echo this concept. Well, I found myself, but not the way that others did. Um, how did that happen? In my first year of university, uh, I went to the university, and I, when I moved to Amsterdam, I didn't know anyone in the city. I moved there alone, had an apartment alone. There, they didn't have dormitories or anything. No, I had to figure, figure out how to find friends and everything. So purely I was there without any uh, community. And that gave me a lot of time, especially in the beginning. You know, I made a few friends, but uh, and then you know that, that grew, but it gave me a lot of time to really think about things and also realizing that, you know, sure, there were things that you could, you could indulge in here and there, and that, that, that those are the things that college students took part in. Mm. But as I started seeing that, even, even in the first year, I started realizing if this is what people consider the pinnacle of life to be, <laughs> Like, this isn't a what life worth living, you know? Like, it's not, I, I, it wasn't like I, uh, I was just staring at all, I was just kind of questioning, why do people say that this is the worst thing? Why do people say that, you know, uh, you know even, even going into adulthood, I see that, you know, people who have children, they, they, they have a job and they have money and they're still so depressed. Yeah. They're still so upset with their life. They can't find happiness. They're always complaining. They're always complaining about their lives, and they have everything. Yeah. How how is that? And then growing up in, in the Jewish environment, complaining is all I heard too, because that's something that is very cultural. Yeah. It is cultural. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's it, it's as if all I've been hearing in my entire life is just complaints. But um, I thought there had to be you know at least something that was true. So I started researching. Um, into, I looked at, at all the different world religions, you know, kind of in a list and like their basic beliefs. Uh, you know, on vacation one time, I was just we were stuck on a train. I wanted to do something, so I saw what what do I what do I jive most with? And it wasn't the Islam. It was what, what I found I connected most with was was Taoism. You know, it's the Tao the Tao the Tao Te Ching. You know, the this this Chinese philosophy of balance. Everything in the world is set upon balance. At, the, at that time, I had pretty much, uh, I was agnostic, you know? Neither confirming nor denying uh, an, an, the existence yeah. of a creator in general. I just didn't have anything to connect me to that. I didn't find Judaism gave me that because they they were constantly giving me contradictory things to believe in. Yeah. And that just wasn't helping me, so I didn't want to believe in I said, why are, why are we doing these things? Oh, just because it's tradition. No, that doesn't work for me. Or does it work for most other Jewish people today? Um, what I did was, read the Dr. King. And as I was reading it, I noticed a few things. I noticed not only it is speaking something that is fundamentally true, at least in some aspects of it, it was very profound, but there are words that I found and there are phrases that I've heard in there. Uh, I definitely heard them in almost exactly the same way somewhere else. Allah Allah, and I have no idea how or where the epiphany came from, of where I, I said, where have I heard this from? It doesn't sound like it came from the Old Testament, it sounds like it came from the New Testament. I swore I've heard, and this sounds like something that uh, Arif Abu Salam would have said. So what did I do? I went online and I typed in the phrase, and then Bible, and boom, there it is. I find the verse in the Bible that says almost exactly the same thing as the Tao Te Ching. I'm thinking, how is it that a Chinese philosopher at this point in time, and a, and a prophet from the Middle East, they could not have at all exchanged these ideas, and this is a core, and they're talking about core fundamental truths of this world. How did they come to the same conclusion? So I came to the, the at least this base conclusion that there is one truth that you can find anywhere. And I kept finding more and more, like you can find in any, any faith, any, any um, tradition that has a faith-based tradition in this world, they all have this one fundamental truth that they all agree upon. And so what I did was, for my entire second year of university, I started reading about different religions. 
with that in mind. We're trying to find out, okay, what are the, clearly there are religions and stuff that have changed and morphed and took separate paths, yeah. separate sects. <clears throat> but what, um, what, I, what I was looking at is, okay, whatever they all agree upon, that's the religion I will follow. I will only accept that which they all agree upon. That's what I started to do. I mean, I learned later on that there, this is there's a name for this. It's called perennial philosophy. It's not. Uh, it, it has its it has its its falsehoods um, that I learned later on, uh, just as a, as a general you know as a general concept. If somebody believes this man, but then continue, continues to believe in perennial philosophy, that's something for a different time. But that's what I basically believe in. Just, I was a perennialist, a perennial I was a believer in perennial philosophy. Every religion has some truth in it. Um, but those those truths that you find out they all agree with, that, that has to be the truth. And what I did is I kept acquiring those in, in my heart and my mind. And I read through the Bhagavad Gita, I read through you know, um, other Eastern religions and their texts and uh, the whole Bible. So I, I read through the entire Bible again. You know, first I, I did the, the, read the Jewish, um, the way like, like including their uh, their explanations of the Torah, you know, the, the Torah. Uh, so the um, Read through all of those books, and then went on to the New Testament. And by the time I got to the Paul, the, the epistles of Paul, I just stopped and I said, "This is this is no, this is nothing. This is worthless to me because it doesn't have any truth. It just has a man talking with other people, other men. Yeah. It's, there's no prophethood in this. There's no connection with the with, with with God in in these epistles. I left it alone. But everything else, I I took more and more knowledge from, and I said, okay, next. From what I've heard is the Qur'an. Why? Because the Qur'an is, from what people say, um, it's a revelation that is also Abrahamic, or the, the, the religion of Islam is Abrahamic. It still follows everything, it just came after. It came after um, the, uh, uh, you know, the Christian tradition. And, uh, <coughs> um, and uh, so naturally I would read the Qur'an next. Sure. And so downstairs from my apartment uh, at that time in Amsterdam, there was a cafe. And that cafe owner, we, we, we've gotten uh, on, on good terms, you know, we, um, I would always go and we'd have great conversations. And I knew he was Muslim. I knew he was Muslim and he, uh, you know, he was a really great guy. And, I, and so I told him, you know, because we, we talk about everything really. At that point, we were just having nice conversations. And I said, hey, so I, I, I'm, you know, I finished the, I told him I was reading the Bible and everything. I said, I finished the Bible and I want to start reading the Quran. He said, okay, great. Uh, if you need any help, let me know. If you want me to give you a translation for you, let me know. If you have any questions, don't, don't hesitate to ask me. When people say don't, don't hesitate to ask me questions, they're expecting them to just say, okay, okay, great. And then they'll go on and do their own thing. I would go down to his cafe every day. I would bombard him with questions. I wouldn't stop. I was relentless. I would keep asking him questions. After reading the Quran, or just a few pages, and then go down there. While I was reading the Quran, yeah, right, exactly. just a few right. pages. I right, said, right. Um, "Okay, I'm reading here. I'm re I've, I've gotten this far. Okay, this is how I understand the deed. This is how I understand Islam. Yeah. This is how I interpret it, or how I see it. I, I believe this, this, and this about Allah. I believe that this, this, and this is the truth. I believe in this, this, and this because it, this is the only thing that makes sense to me." And if this is true, then this must also be true, right? And so what I would do is I'd tell him these things. And this happened on three different occasions where he would say, he'd listen, he'd say, he'd say, Akhi, brother, what you are describing to me, the way you are describing it to me, this is our faith. Like, like the way that I would explain, yeah, 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 yeah. my understanding of Islam, I said, this is how I understand Islam. Tell me, tell me your opinion or your interpretation. Yeah. He said, what you have read, the way you interpret it, that's how we understand it. I said, really? Yes. This happened like three different times. Where I, I read the Quran, or I read, or I'm reading things about Islam. And what happened as I was reading the Quran? Those truths that I found from those other faiths lined right up, right in the Quran, one after another. The truths just kept popping right up. The same truths that I found, instead of them being a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, no, all of them lined right up yeah. in the Quran, one after another, after another. Which it makes sense, even you know when you go deep in it. Yeah, yeah. and because the depth that it goes, and then the interpretation, you say, well, the the literal interpretation of this doesn't work because of this, this, and this, and then you'll find a hadith that explains that it's yeah. how it's supposed to be interpreted. Yeah, the way that some I people, yeah. So you you know, I, I realize that there's 
there's this whole um, there's a whole other level of, 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 of studying because I, yeah. I knew how Jews studied the Torah. Yeah. I understand that they have the Talmud, you know, yeah, right. the, the, the oral tradition. Yeah. Well, there's the Hadith, and the Hadith contain, uh, you know, a similar oral tradition, except they're not rabbis. It's the Prophet yeah. and his companions. Yeah. And the Ismad is something that I is completely unheard of. In any other face, uh, faith in the world, you'll, you'll, you'll never find something with the, this um, rigorous. Like they will make sure to, to study the biographies of everyone in the chain to make sure that this one person is not weak of mind. Yeah. Carbon copinated all the way down there, but throughout all that time, every single one of those people did a, a psychological, basically, evaluation on those people, exactly. you know, which is mind blowing to me that they allegedly, you know, they made sure that his memory was fine and made sure that, you know, who told them yeah. what and, and, and they did a psychological evaluation and all those people. Yeah. Was he a true believer? Was his Aqida sound? Everything. Yeah. They, make, they, they look into this guy completely every every single step along the way. And that's, that's when I thought, okay, this man holds the truth. But I didn't, I didn't take my shahada yet because there were, as I was researching all the other religions, I realized all the other religions were split. But they were split up into their sects. And I said, and I was already looking at like different sects of different things and finding, you know, their interpretations. Some of them have interesting interpretations. Some of them seem more correct than others. And I said, okay, Islam, it also has sects, but how much do they differ, really? Truly, how much do the sects differ? Do they differ intrinsically on everything, like the Christians and the and the. Uh, the way that they argue about the, the nature of Christ. It's completely different. In their, they, they, they have completely separate understandings. Yeah. In certain instances, Protestants versus Catholics versus um, you know the Orthodoxy, yeah. they all have different interpretations. While they are similar, they, 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 one little schism, one little interpretation, you know, the Holy Spirit and the Son, are they one and the same? All this stuff. Islam didn't have that no. at all. It's one Quran. No, there, yeah. Even you know, you, you find the the two biggest um, schisms are between uh, the biggest schism of, of sects. Uh, Shia, 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 right. But even the Shia use the same Quran, Quran, Quran as Quran. us. Yeah. You know, I, I, yeah. you're a Sunni here, and it doesn't matter who, which, which Sex Muslim you. you talk to. If they say La ilaha illallah. Yeah. They have read this Quran, yeah. and they have read the same Quran. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And yeah, the sects, they do differ on some things that can lead to varying degrees of, of um, deviancies in certain things. Absolutely. And that's what I started to research. Yeah. Right. So I had to research the differences between those who go uh, astray in, in uh, going to the excesses in spirituality, yeah. the excesses, excesses in literalism, the excesses in harshness, the excesses in kindness, mm -hmm. because there's always this balance idea was really what stuck with me because if you're going to find the straight path, it is that which has it's between the two extremes yeah. of anything. So I had to keep looking at the extremes to find out where the center was. And it was while I was researching the difference, the differences of opinions between even Arabi and even Thaymiya, if for whoever out there. <laughs> knows the, the the Sufi Salafi schism and everything surrounding that. I was on the page, I was reading about the differences between um, the, you know, and and then one another Muslim walks in while I'm at the cafe, he's reading this, and you know, Abdul Wahid, um, he's, he's the one who took my job. My name, Wahid. <laughs> one. Uh, Abdul Wahid. So um, he's, the, he's the owner of this uh, of this cafe. And uh, he's a really beautiful guy. Um, but he, you know, he was sitting across from me, and you know, uh, we're going back and forth about these things, you know. Um, but another brother walks in, and he says, "This is what you're reading about? Have, why haven't you taken your shahada yet?" He just throws it in my face. This is this is how far you're researching, and you haven't even taken your shahada. And I'm like, at this point, I came to the realization, like, you're right. I, I could get in a car accident tomorrow. And, you know. That wasn't that wasn't even my thing on my mind. It's like there was a realization that I'm like, you're right. I haven't actually made. The testimony. I haven't made. Like, even, I do believe in everything that I've been reading so far. Th there's nothing in here that I can deny. And that was what I'm thinking. Is there anything in here, any last-minute denial that I can make about this? I said no. 
There's nothing in this that I can deny, because this is fundamentally true. I have found that everything in this religion, as it stands, is fundamentally true. And even if I haven't re researched all the sects yet, I knew that the amount that they that they corroborate, like the evidence that you can corroborate against one another, to say this sect is false because, or this has falsehoods in it because, here's the hadith that explains this falsehood. Mm -hmm. And if they reject it, that's on them. But there is the hadith. Yeah. There is this statement in the Quran, there's the tafsir that explains why this should be translated this or uh, understood this way and not this way. Everything was there. And I knew that it was to that large extent. And there is not a single religion on this earth that has this uh, depth. And the depth of, uh, of, of making sure that everything is correct. Yeah. Because you, you, Judaism is deep. Believe it or not, Judaism, in the amount of tomes, not. You want to talk about a, a donkey carrying the, the tomes on his back? Well, lucky. They have books. They have tomes. They have so much knowledge under their belt, and much of it, much of it is true, but much of it is not, and much of it ends up making you draw circles. And I mean, I'm talking about uh, getting confused between the Day of Judgment and Laylat al Qadr. Not kidding. That's one. Uh, understanding uh, Jahannam um, only in the terms of a Muslim who will end up going to Jannah after anyway. They call it Day of Nom. Same thing. They have the same concepts for the ones who study. They have the same concepts in the religion. You have to research it though. But they get all these things just put in the wrong place because they've been re they've been re reiterated so many generations orally and they've been changed one way or another. There's no per proper isnad. They have all this knowledge, but Islam corroborated that and said, "Here, look, this is plain and simple. If you need." You know, more depth, more knowledge. We have it in the, the religion as well. It's, it's it's explained. And if you find something that there that's in the other faiths, then you have all of these basic proofs that show that this actually is a true statement. Yeah. If you read the Bible, you know what what parts of it are true and parts are not. If you read the Torah, you'll know what parts are true and yeah. parts are not. And that's when you know. So I, I took my shahada that day um, with Abdul Wahid. You know, and his sister went, uh, and, and you know, in the cafe, she made she made dinner for us. It was, it was a celebration, you know. And small, but he said, "This was a Thursday." I think we should have that on a Thursday. He said, "Tomorrow is Friday, so come come to the masjid." Um, and this is a Muslim, right? This is an Amsterdam. Yeah. And the masjid was uh, they're they're very much upon the upon the, the Sunnah. You know, they 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 are very uh, they like to make sure that everything is proper, and. You know, I go in, and I, I never even, I, I only learned to pray that night before, just basically the basic prayer movements and everything. And he says, just just copy whatever people are doing, you know? Um, and I go in, and we sit down, we listen to the lecture, which was all in Arabic, you know? Um, and uh, and then, you know, at the end, they, uh, they'll, um, uh, I think uh, Abdul Ahid or another brother went up, told the, um, the imam that, Right. So he was going to take the shahada because this time I'm doing it right, 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 right. Um, and so I went up there and I took my shahada and what happened then was something I didn't think I would experience in my whole life I've never heard of a faith that when when somebody accepts the religion people start bawling people start crying for you they start realizing what it really means to be uh, not not just saint in this case where you, you have come to the realization Allah has chosen for this person to have knowledge, for this person to be upon the right path, or to even be seeking the right path, but also that this person is now the purest person in the room, and the, the, they line up, the, the entire masjid, to the back of the wall of the masjid, lined up with people waiting to hug you. And I was stunned. I, I didn't know, like, my mind was just blank. I, didn't, I was just hugging people, saying thank you, you know, like, saying whatever I could, you know, because these people were sincere. They were sincerely happy for help. You do that in any other faith. Oh, oh good for you. High five. High five. <laughs> That's about it. And we, after so, that, we, uh, we go with the, the imam, and we go with some of the other brothers. We go to a, uh, you know, a Moroccan fish restaurant. We're eating. I get thrown right into the deep end. I'm, we're eating, you know, everyone's eating with the right hand. I can only use my right hand. Everyone's speaking Arabic and Moroccan dialect. And I'm like, 
everyone's wearing their chamis, everyone's wearing kufi, they have big beards, I'm like, I went from here to here in one day, and I'm laughing at that, and, and you know, the, the fact that I've, I've, I've been experiencing many different cultures and everything, and that, that didn't surprise me, what surprised me is how comfortable I felt to, with this, you know, because um, I, 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 I've been with rabbis who have a long beard and everything, but these people had a different aura to them. They, when I was with those people, they, whenever they needed to correct me, they didn't do so. Say, uh, uh, don't do that. They say, here, you should do this because our beloved prophet used to be a prophet. He said, he said this, or this is the reason why. You know, they, they always gave me reasons. They always did it with kindness. They never berated me, and they never told me um, anything with harshness. And these people were still very much so upon the soul. But the fact that these people were not um, saying, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. Oh, no, no, don't do this. If they give me reasons. They say, they don't, it's not like they say, if you don't do this, then this will happen to you. Like, you talk to a Christian who, who, who says, if you, don't, if you don't accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to hell. Whoa. <laughs> From here to there is a big difference. Exactly. And then in Judaism, you get, why, why is this this? Well, in this book we've read this, but in this book we've read this, and also in this book we read this, so I mean, you can, you know, <laughs> no answers. So here in Islam, you have answers. There's only one, uh, one correct, uh, one, one, one thing that is correct. Maybe there are multiple ways to do this one correct thing, but when somebody just brings and says, well, can I do this? They'll say, okay, here's why you can. Here's why. There's a hadith reported by Abu Hurairah. So they go with the Islam. They'll t they won't. They won't say no, no. You can't. You can't. You can't. And I can't even answer why you can't. You know, because you ask her why can't you, and then most of the time they tell you no, that you gotta leave. Oh the yeah, you know, well, my, my my dad. You know, he, he told me like maybe you'll grow horns or something. <laughs> they they come up with something. Right? And you know, so and the other thing about that is that when you come into the religion, you know, you'll also have a lot of Muslims come and try to talk to you. Yeah. And then they'll try to teach you. The thing is, is when a Muslim tries to teach you, and they're not from the Sunnah, or they, they don't have knowledge. Yeah. And they don't have the proper uh, understanding, the proper aqidah, then you can get deviated just that's just as true. easily. So that's why that's I was true. I was like holding firm to whatever I had and trying to make sure that whoever was teaching me things. These people were pure of heart, and they were they were not misguided, and that took a lot of a lot of uh, trial and error. But um, yeah, so as far as my mom, I, I told my mom the day of, like the night I got back, I told my mom I, I chose I chose a religion. She's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, mom, I I uh, I now I now have chosen a faith that I believe in, and I told her to guess. She kept guessing all the Eastern traditions because. That I was researching before, and I was like, no. He's like, oh, I hope it's not Islam. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah. No, she uh, she didn't take it very, very well the first time. She didn't find it to be something like, it wasn't like she had a, a faith that she held strongly to and that she needed me to. It was more that I was a certain person before I accepted Islam, and she liked that person. And after I accepted Islam, Pretty quickly, I changed, and she didn't like the speed in which I started restricting myself to do things that, uh, for me, I found benefited, and for her, she thought was archaic or weird or didn't make sense. Why do you have to pray? Why this? Why that? Why this? And I was giving her basic explanations. That and their heart, they know why. Yeah, you know? <laughs> but that's it was. She doesn't, and she you know even up until now, like, she's not. Uh, she doesn't love the fact that I am not the same, uh, I'm not as open as I used to be, that I have um, more conservative ideals in comparison to liberal America, you know, that kind of thing. Um, because it was just, it was just like a switch like a dime, you know? Just heads to tails. So that was, she didn't like that. But she still loved me. And she, you know, I, I live with her now. She's completely accepting of, you know, that I am Muslim, you know, she, she accepts that I, I go to pray at night in the masjid and I'll wake up so early in the morning for Fajr if I can, you know, like go to the masjid and if I, um, if I, if I, you know, come in here and I'll let her know everything that I'm doing. I'm not, 
you know, I'm not, I never secrets them. And uh, I tell her, you know, I can, we can talk about everything. And, you know, she still loves it very much. I'm living that. Well, you have changed for the best. I mean, you know. But in this case, uh, and this is something that actually the chef at, um, uh, where I, in Banalas County, where I go, that's the way it's the Rahman chef. I was talking, and he's like, somebody tells me that your character was already very similar to the way you are now, before accepting this event. Yeah. In a way, this is, I mean, like the, my, 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 uh, a way of going about life, my, my demeanor, my, you know, but if I haven't, my personality really hasn't switched, but my ideas have. So that's why if for somebody who maybe was a really harsh person, they become softer, or for somebody who's, you know, really like violent, they become peaceful, that like these things are when you see that this man really changes the life of someone. But in my case, the subtleties are, are uh, hard for the people who don't. They know that I'm somebody who, who makes very different changes to do this and this. I went to Germany all, all of a sudden. I went to Amsterdam. They, they, they know I make really uh, intrig in, in, intriguing choices in life. So they're not surprised that I make an intriguing choice. The thing is, is that they don't see that my character has changed outwardly. It's only when they start to talk and they start to understand the knowledge of, of, that, that I have of things. You start to realize, like, whoa, your perspective on things are just not what I expected. But it's only for the people who who wish to hear that. The people who understand. The people who understand. Yeah, and it's not like I don't know a lot of mo like I know nothing. Like, basically, I know nothing. But it's just the the fact that when you when you come with even this much knowledge about Islam. You sound like you're the wisest person to somebody who, who's looking for that. So it's, and you know, the thing is, is that they might not, they may not accept it, but that thing kind of echoes within them. So it's did, did she, uh, did have she read the Quran at all, or, or tried to read it, or not? No, mm, no, no. She <coughs> she doesn't have an interest. Um, no. She's not interested in religion at all, and because she sees you know, even even about the idea of, of you know. Because it, it really is all about your connection with God, and she doesn't, she doesn't try to establish that the same way that a religious person would. And so for her, it's really about living the life of this dunya, and that's not the life of, that, that's not the life that I live. And for her, she only knows the dunya. Yeah. And for me, I'm done with the dunya. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, what about your dad? He passed away when I was eight. Um, you know, uh, Allah knows best yeah. what the situation is. So. Um, I trust in Allah, and uh, whatever will come of that. I have no idea what, uh, what he has known about Islam prior to him passing away. Mm -hmm. Do you have brothers and sisters? I have a half brother. Uh, okay. He's Canadian. So he grew up in Canada, now like He knows I'm Muslim, he's accepting of it. Completely. Happy. Uh, he doesn't know much. He's not a very religious person, but you know, he, he cares about morals and ideas. He's also more, you know, more conservative. So we, we get, we, we really do get along very well. We only really started talking to each other once I started becoming more of an adult. Because uh, it's an eight year, eight year difference. He's eight years older than me, so. That's, that's How old are you, by the way? I'm, uh, I'm 21. I'll be 22 next time. I mean, look what's coming out of his mouth from that young age, you know, all the wisdom. It's not about age. <laughs> no, it, it, it's not about age. Um, age, like if you look at some of the Sahab, you know, you look at what they were doing when they were 18, 17, the knowledge they had, it's different. It's I just different. posted that, by the way, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I just posted a video here just a little while ago, a 12 year old kid that just converted to Islam. Okay. And then uh, he was saying that today's my last day as a Christian and why I converted to Islam. So yeah, I agree with you, even that young age, you know, uh, once when it hits you, it makes you realize uh, it's amazing. You should see that video that I just posted. It's only three minutes. But um, uh, so I know you're coming to Sheikh Saeed's classes, obviously, and, and, and you're taking your knowledge to completely to another level. Uh, and you also see another Sheikh in uh, the St. Pete area, right? Yeah, I, I, every, every um, I try to diversify. Sure, like, and that's a good thing. Uh, the one in St. Pete uh, actually sadly passed away a couple weeks ago. You really? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Allah have mercy on him. And, um, but I, there's uh, another sheikh um, close by here, um, Sheikh Fat, 
Um, he used to be an uh, official in uh, Pinellas County, multiple different ma massages, and now he's at the uh, Ali Bashara Center. Um, so I've also been taking uh, classes from him ever since about January. So alhamdulillah, you know, like trying to take knowledge from different people. Like, yeah. They all have a different perspective. Yeah, of course. Or, you know, one is really um, just you know, Quran, Sunnah, Tafsir, you know, and then the other one is Tafsir, how you can apply it to your life, and then, you know, everyone has their different approach. And their strength. Exactly. Everyone has, the, yeah, their, uh, their um, uh, specialty. Um, what, what do you see uh, you doing in the long term, uh, as far as, you know, religiously goes? What What is your, your, your long term goal? Obviously, you're studying, uh, is, is there a, a, a long-term goal that you have? Uh, to, uh, Maybe going to Makkah and Medina sometimes? To go, to go for hedges as soon as I can, absolutely. Um, I don't see myself, at least it's not my current uh, outlook to go and study the deen to become sure. a shaykh. Yeah, of course. Um, I just don't see currently with my position in Spain in life, it's not suitable. Uh, it's not suitable. Right. Um, so I'm taking knowledge as I can. Yes. Um, but I do see myself uh, becoming somebody who, who is actively involved with people uh, on a personal level. I'm not the kind of, I mean, sure, I can, I can give a talk. Sure. But I'm the kind of person who, I like to be one, I like to be face to face, I like to be one on one with people. Sure. Because they're gonna, I, I wanna see how their mind, how, how, how do they think? And then I try to, and, I, and then when they try to talk to me, I try to adapt the way that I, I speak so that way I can be on their level. Yeah. If, if they're open, if they're an if open they're person. Open, sure. Because these people, if they're, if, I, I, that's the kind of dialogue I like. I like one on one, one on one dialogue, or teaching. And I'm, I mean, I'm, a, I would consider myself a harsh teacher, not, not, not because I'm harsh in tone, but because James I, told me. <laughs> James told me. I'll, I won't, I won't hold things. I won't hold back. I was, I was really <laughs> amazed what, what he told me, what, you know, what you told him. I'm like, yeah, he, he's right, he's right, that's Islam, that's the way you gotta do it. I, I don't talk, yeah, I, I kick people off a cliff, <laughs> no. I, I, I throw them off a cliff and I have a really tight rope. <laughs> that's what it is. I make sure that they, when somebody says something, that they're gonna be saying the right thing. That when they learn something, they're gonna be learning the right thing. Because I know what it's like to, to hear all these different weird opinions about matters or to come up with excuses. I'm, I'm a no excuses kind of guy. If I have an excuse, I know it's an excuse and I'll admit it. Because it's not fair to yourself. It's not fair to Allah. If you try to make an excuse for something that you are of a, of a shortfall of yours, don't try to say it is within the deen. Rather, don't make an excuse that what you're doing is somehow halal. That instead it should be, you should admit that Maybe there are shortcomings in it. Maybe it's questionable. Maybe it's haram and you know it, and you're trying to excuse yourself from it. You shouldn't. You shouldn't hide from. You shouldn't hide from these things because if you truly want the best in this deen, it's about going near to your Lord. How do you go near to somebody who you're hiding from? You know, you can It's like it's like you're hiding behind a wall, and the and and, and it's like, you don't think you're gonna be seen. Yes, yeah. it it's all. Subhanallah. So it's you know uh, that's that's my main thing is I like to I like to be be there as as like a support. I don't want I don't want to be there as somebody who just teaches. Um, right now, it's not my goal. So I'm a very. Uh, I, I also like to make sure I'm I'm well versed in. Not when I say well versed in the dunya, I mean understanding the. Uh, the, the way in which the, the dunya functions. I like to see it as, as a system. Because when you understand the system, you know how, what to avoid, how to avoid it. You know what, what, what can benefit you and how to, to, how to obtain it. Yeah. Because this life is a test, but if your goal is to stay away from that which harms you and to earn hasanat, you know, earn these good deeds, where, where can you find the good deeds? And, and how is it the most efficient for you to do so? With your current standing, what's the best way for you to earn hasanat? What's the best way for you to be pleasing to Allah? And that is always gonna be different for everyone. 
So it's not it's not an all uh, all size uh, one size fits all. You know, it can't be that way. Um, <clears throat> um, what do you suggest for someone who's thinking about being a Muslim? And you know, and obviously I've you know heard this before over again and again, and that when you become Muslim, you know, your parents get upset and sometimes they don't even want to talk to you. And, you know, you told me that, James has told me that, and just about everybody else that I have talked to. And then in time that I have also seen that the family has completely shifted, you know, and in even some cases, their family has converted to Islam. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because it, it is tough, there's no question about it, you know, uh, for your mom or your dad to be upset at you, especially with something this huge. Uh, what do you suggest to to others that are thinking about becoming Muslims or they already are Muslims and they're having, uh, you know, a hard time with their family? So, the, the, the problem with a lot of... Uh, the way that we approach this, the way that we approach this is thinking of it as a, as a family issue, when it's really an issue of the heart. <clears throat> so when people say, uh, oh, I just, I don't want to accept this religion, even though I, I know, I know it's right, I know it's the right thing to do, and they say it that way, I know it's the right thing for me and for, you know, in general, but I just, I just, and they fear the unknown. They fear that which they don't know how they're going to react, or they have an idea of how they might react. The thing is that they don't have um, knowledge. It's it's a it's a mixture of not having knowledge, not having certainty. Yakun. For the one who doesn't have certainty, um, if for instance, if you don't have certainty in your deen, and then you go to talk to your parents, your parents might put you in a situation that makes you completely. Uh, break down because you don't have that certainty that allows you to hold strong. Islam has supports that if you know if you know how to hold fast to them, these beings are never gonna break. It's the one who doesn't have the knowledge, as you said, um, he won't he won't have that certainty, he won't have that yakin. Or if your knowledge been Fox T V for the past fifty years between Sean Hannity and Carl Tuckerson and Bill O'Reilly and Rush Lumbar. Yeah. Their knowledge, their basis of knowledge is completely uh, warped. You, the, the world is like this, and you have only learned this. And then maybe Islam is somewhere over here, they're just with basic knowledge, and Islam is somewhere over here. So now you have these two confronting things, and there's this bridge that you have to build between these two. So for the one who doesn't know how to approach this, learn a bit, learn a bit about life. Learn a bit about it. What is it that your parents believe in and why do they believe in it? What's the history of their belief? What's the history of their, and I'm not, when I say belief, I don't mean religion. I mean their ideology. How do you think? And, and how did you come to that? And then say, okay, well, I came from that and I just branched out like this, right? But you have, you have to find where that gap is, right? You have to find out how to talk to them. You have to learn how to speak their language because it's like a different language. If you want to speak to um, a Christian about Islam, what do you do? You bring up Surah Maryam. You bring up, you know, you, you talk, you talk, you, you, you tell them, do you want to know what we believe? We believe that. And then you bring up the Surah Maryam or, or uh, Al Imran. And you want to talk to um, the Jews? And then you, you, I mean, most of them mentioned more than anybody else for Allah's sake in the Quran. Exactly. You know, and same thing with Jesus. Prophet Muhammad's only mentioned four or five times. You know, and, and, and Moses and Jesus are mentioned more than anybody else in the Quran. So if, if this was a book that was written by the Prophet, peace be upon him, why would he they wouldn't put his own name in there that he's going to put his, uh, uh, you know, uh, Moses and Jesus' name. Why would he put Maryam's name in the Holy Quran, Mary, peace be upon her, the mother of Jesus? Why wouldn't put Khadija in there, peace be upon her, Aisha in there, peace be upon him, you know, Fatima, peace be upon her. Why Why wouldn't, you know, be uh, them then, then go and put Maryam or Mary? You're absolutely right, brother. And it's not, and, it, and then, as I said, it's not just about faith. It's the ideology. So if you learn that they they believe a certain thing, 
It doesn't, you know, they, they grew up this way. But then you have to, you just have to bring in straight up facts, bring in, bring in history. Say, we believe this, but here's, here's the real history. And then if they deny it, that's, that's the best you can do is give them the truth. So that's, that's, that's what Islam is about. You give, you give them the truth, and it's for them to take it or leave it. But it's the strength that you have to build. The best way to overcome this is to read the stories of the Sahaba where this happened to them. So read about the story of Bilal. Bilal, subhanAllah, from a slave who was dragged on his back in the broiling hot desert, stones crushing him, yeah. just say, say one bad thing about Islam, and he just says, Ahad, Ahad, no one, no one could withstand just even the dragging in this day and age. They would just give him, immediately give him. Immediately, and this, Bilal, first person to be a mulat muaddi, you know, in, in Islam, right? one of the most close companions to uh, the Prophet and he was black and he was black, yeah. no and no one when Abu Dhar was angry at Bilal he said son of a son of, son of a black woman he went straight to Rasulullah and Abu Dhar's rushing at him no 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 yeah. <laughs> tells Rasulullah that he has what he told me and there's no, there's never, uh, there's always going to be um, somebody who is, in Islam, if someone knows they've done wrong, Abu Dhar is going, he's kissing the feet of Bilal, ask, begging for forgiveness. What, what is, when you have, when you look at the history of America and the way that they treat anyone who is not white, anyone who is not Christian has this perfect puritanical background, you just show them this and you say, this is a religion of peace. This is a religion that cares about one another. When they make a mistake, they beg. They beg the person who you would put under you, you beg them as if they're a king. As if they are the, the only person ruling you. Because if, for, if not for their forgiveness, how then could they ask for Allah for forgiveness? That's the death that Islam teaches. So when people don't, they don't, they, they read these stories, these beautiful stories of the Sahaba and how, and the, the, the you know, the people who, their mothers, they, they, they said, their mother said, I, I, she went on a, a fast, that she wouldn't eat, or drink anything, or she wouldn't eat anything, she went on a hunger strike, until he, accept, until he reverted his yeah. faith. And he said, no. There's so many yeah. different, so many different stories of the struggles that the Sahaba went through, just, to uphold la ilaha illallah. And so it's that, reading those stories that build up those strengths. So when your parents come to you with, I'm taking away your inheritance. Well, good, I don't, I don't inherit from a non-Muslim anyway. <laughs> you know, not, not taking it, don't take it to such extremes, but you, you realize that nothing that they say or do can actually truly harm you. Because everything that they do, if your response is pure, it could just be another form of da'al. They realize, whoa, there's no way I'm gonna be able to change and then, his response to harshness is kindness. I've never seen my son do this. I, this is something that Islam has. When they start treating you like this, that's when they start questioning the religion. So if they treat you with harshness, the best da'wah is be patient with their punishment. And when you aren't being punished, then just continue to be kind and then pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they will be guided. And that's all you can do. You're amazing, brother. You know, Allah, he, uh, it's amazing how much Islam teaches you. You know, and, and uh, uh, I don't want to bring your age again, but you know, I, it's, it, it's just mine, but you know, you talk to people twice of your age and, and they just don't understand that concept, you know? And, and, and understanding it, it's, it's, it, it's a blessing. It really is. Um, c come on down here, uh, James also. Why don't you come sit down here for a few minutes? I, uh, I just get that. <clears throat> So obviously James is also a convert. We did a convert story on him, and it's really it's a blessing to be among uh, my 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 good friends, and and it's really it's an honor uh, to do these convert stories. And uh, you know, you guys hearing it from me, it's not going to impact 
anybody as much as you hear it actually from a convert themselves and that's why I do these great convert stories and, and Alhamdulillah there was a team of people that was here from Mecca also and yesterday uh, they did a lot of great stuff here not only fundraising uh, but uh, they invited me to go to Mecca and Medina uh, to show me a, a, a private uh, a tour of uh, the, the, the holy place and it, it will be an honor and privilege actually to, to do that. But uh, James, uh, do you want to have anything to say? I know me and you talked a lot. Uh, you're very sharp yourself. You're very smart. You know, your convert story was amazing. Do you want to add into what uh, the brother was just saying, Yaqub? Um, I don't really have anything to add to him. I'm learning from him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but apart from that, it's, it's kind of, uh, yeah, it, it is kind of uh, interesting that uh, you know, I was doing James's Converse story and we all were here in Sheikh Saeed's class because he teaches all of us. And then that's how I met Yaqub and then they got introduced. And a few hours later, I talked to James and he's like, look, man, I was doing everything wrong. You know, and Yaqub uh, took the lead to, uh, uh, you know, teach him about our beautiful religion as he was just talking in such a depth and detail. And now they are, good friends and they go to the mosque together uh, even in St. Pete and uh, you know they're bonding with each other which is great to see that. Uh, uh, James is going to be helping me with some of my social media stuff because it's just getting too much to run five six different uh, you know platforms so he's going to help me out with that. Uh, as you guys just heard you know the beautiful story of Yaqub and uh, inshallah, you know, if, I'm sure if we need anything or any help from him in any way, shape or form, uh, and he's also going to be available, uh, you know, to help us. And uh, we're just going to continue building our, our channels and our platform to bring these beautiful stories, uh, you know, heart touching stories to change the mind uh, of and the souls of, of other people and jointly bring us together. Uh, obviously, he was from a Jewish background. He was from a, a Christ, Christian back, Catholic background. And I'm obviously from a Muslim background. But you see how all of us are united now under the same flag uh, of Islam. And uh, it is great to see our beautiful religion spreading all across the United States and all around the world the way it is. Uh, so may Allah's peace and blessing be upon all of you. If you guys don't have anything else to say, we'll just go and conclude this. And I'm sure I will continue talking to both of them from time to time, check up on them. Uh, they're, they're building their knowledge. They, they are already knowledgeable. And in time, uh, we will continue uh, our journey with both of them and many others. May Allah's peace and blessing be upon you from wherever you're watching. Peace and blessing. You can cut it off now. <laughs>